The Avengers have been around in one form or another since 1963. That's 56 years that they've had to save the planet over and over and over again. So, as you can imagine, they've had quite a high turnaround in membership. Now, everyone knows about your Thors, your Iron Mans, and your Captain Americas. Hell, thanks to Disney and Marvel, people even know about the Vision and Ant-Man. But they aren't the only characters that have occupied Avengers Towers or Avengers Mansion, depending on which one is, at the time, less blown up. There have been vampires, ghost riders, and hulks by the bucket load, and while the usual suspects tend to be there too, it's the less expected inclusions that tend to generate fan interest. So, I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Comics, and here are 10 Marvel characters you didn't know were Avengers. Number 10, Moon Knight. Moon Knight is a street-level character who sort of started out as a rip-off of Batman. However, as the years have gone by, the character of Mark Spector has turned into one of the most fascinating in the Marvel library. At the peak of the character's resurgence, Marvel's lunar hero actually joined the Avengers, or rather the Secret Avengers, after Steve Rogers' return. Ed Brubaker's stint on the book was short-lived, but it was great to see Moon Knight feature in an ensemble cast. Number 9. Daredevil For a very long time, it looked as if Matt Murdock would never become an Avenger. In fact, it seemed that the only way the boy from Hell's Kitchen would ever fight side by side with Earth's Mightiest Heroes would be in some sort of fan fiction or another, and I have written plenty. In the aftermath of the Fear Itself event, it seemed even less likely as he was on the outs with Captain America, and there was no love lost between him and the team's new leader, Luke Cage. But in New Avengers 16, the unthinkable actually happened. When the Red Skull launched a full-on Nazi robot attack on the city of New York, because come on, what else would he do, the newest team were out to make sure his attack failed. This meant that Luke Cage and Jessica Jones left their baby in the capable hands of Squirrel Girl as they fought back the assault. But to their horror, Avengers Tower and their baby are seemingly destroyed. This could have been a true tragedy, if not for Daredevil. After completely obliterating a regiment of these killbots with a big freaking gun, he rushes to the tower and takes care of the remaining ones before ushering Squirrel Girl and the child to safety. He's offered a spot on the team, which he fills for about a year and a half. Number 8. The Fantastic Four It may seem weird for Marvel's first family to be here, but over the years, each member of the Fantastic Four has served as an Avenger, even if it's a little odd that the whole group has never been on the team at the same time. The first two to join were Reed and Sue Richards in Avengers number 300 in 1989. They would soon be joined by Johnny Storm nine months later, taking up the cause in West Coast Avengers number 50. Ben Grimm wouldn't take up the Avenger mantle until 2010, some 21 years years after his Fantastic Four brethren in New Avengers Volume 2, number 1. Number 7, Namor. When the Submariner is forced to abdicate his throne, he finds himself at a bit of a loose end. Feeling sorry for himself, he takes to moping around and spending his time at the Hydro base. It's while on one of his visits there that he has a chance meeting with the Avengers in the 1980s. Seemingly happy to be left alone, it takes a surprise attack from Hercules to snap him out of his funk. After the Olympian insulted him and then attacked, a great throwdown ensued that sent shockwaves through the island. This would draw out the rest of the Avengers who would put a stop to it, before accusing Namor of being the one who started the whole thing in the first place. They were surprised to find out that it had, in fact, been all the work of Hercules all along, who justified his actions by saying that he had been tired of Namor's epic sulk and had thought that this would be the perfect way to snap out of it. And laughing, Namor was pleased with this response as it helped him clear his head, and when he was offered a spot on the team, he eagerly accepted. Namor is a famous invader and a defender, but not many know about his time on the Avengers. Number 6. Doctor Doom Victor Von Doom is the absolute boy, the grand tamale of Marvel's villains. He was also a hero for a bit though, and it turns out he was pretty great at it too. In the wake of 2015's Secret Wars, praise be to Jonathan Hickman, Doctor Doom has a change of character. When Iron Man goes into a coma in Civil War 2, Victor decides to become a whole new version of the character. Brian Bendis and Alex Maleev wrote the series, with the two having previously collaborated on Daredevil, and it was great. Go check out our list on 10 best times to be villain switch sides if you don't believe me. Doom was one of many heroes to join Mark Wade's new look Avengers during all new, all different Marvel, and although it was a brief tenure, just look at how majestic he was with the team. Number 5. 
Blade. The Day Walker is finally revealed as a member of the team in Avengers number 700, when the Wasp, now known as an agent of Wakanda, busts him out of a dungeon in Dracula's castle. He's brought into the fold to help stop a vampire war between Old Vlad and the Shadow Colonel, who has decided that enough is enough and it's time for a regime change. Though, with Blade being Blade, his idea of stopping it all is to kill the lot of them, thereby negating any unrest and getting rid of a ton of bloodsuckers in the process. Jason Aaron and Ed McGuinness's Avengers is great fun, and Blade being a part of the team is a testament to its charm. Number 4. Red Hulk Another two for the price of one here, as there has, in fact, been a couple of Red Hulks that have spent time in the Avengers. The first of these was Thaddeus E. Thunderbolt Ross, with Parker Robbins, aka The Hood, searching for the Infinity Gems, having a Hulk of any colour on your side is a pretty good idea. So, when they finally catch up with him, a quick kicking from Thunderbolt Ross is all it takes to retrieve the gems and put the Hood back where he belongs, behind bars. The second is General Robert L. Maverick. When the Secret Empire and their volcano-toting helicarrier decide to launch an all-out attack, they are pushed back by the US Avengers. With their Bond villain base flying high in the sky, volcano and all, this Red Hulk jumps onto it and smashes it in a truly spectacular fashion. Number 3. Valkyrie when Roxxon sends a senior VP to the Middle East, the Avengers send Black Widow and Valkyrie along as distractions so they can steal a box with a very valuable artifact inside it in Secret Avengers number 1. Everything is going according to plan until a very drunk Mr. Bromley starts pouring at Brunhilde, which she does not take very kindly to. Slapping him into the middle of next month, both herself and Widow suddenly find themselves in the middle of a firefight, but with the backup of Captain America, the enemy is defeated and the prize is secured. All of this leads them to taking a trip to Mars, because of course it does, where they seek out another part of the puzzle, but they aren't the only ones. It seems as though the Shadow Council is hot on their trail, led by none other than the original Nick Fury, and they will stop at nothing to get what they want. Again, Secret Avengers is a great book and the inclusion of Valkyrie is a brilliant one. After all, who doesn't want to see a member of Odin's elite kicking ass as often as possible? With Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie clearly destined for greater things on the big screen, it looks as though the character could become a staple of the team in the future, even with the original Brunhilde having been killed in War of the Realms. Number 2. Deadpool the friendship between Deadpool and Steve Rogers must be one of, if not the, strangest ever. Someone that Wade constantly mocks, it's when an older Cap, who has lost his super soldier ability and is aging at a normal rate, seems to see something in the mouth with the mouth that he never knew was there that this weirdest of situations seems to grow. Doing jobs for free and admitting that they're the best fun he's ever had, this non-lethal version of the Merc with the Mouth seems quite happy just to be there. However, it's when he steals a container of Terrigen Mist for the Avengers that he finds out that it's so they can cure Rogue, who is infected by it worse than anyone. Seeming genuinely concerned that Anna Marie might not pull through, as he is leaving the building, he mentions how he's surprised that Cap didn't send a real Avenger on such an important mission. Cap remarks that it may not be today, but soon, before handing him his own Avengers card, signed, sealed, and delivered by both himself and the then president. Number 1. Ghost Rider when the world is under threat from giant bugs and celestials falling from the sky, who do you call? Well, according to the 2018 rendition of the Avengers, pretty much anyone you can, including but not limited to Doctor Strange, Black Panther, Captain Marvel, and more. As I said earlier, Aaron's stint on the Avengers is good old balmy fun. Blade made for a great inclusion, but it's actually Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider that distinguishes this new team apart from all the others. Robbie Reyes has been in the Ghost Rider identity since the start of the decade, and he's finally getting to feature in some of the biggest stories Marvel has to offer. Between Robbie, Danny Ketch, and now Frank Castle, has Marvel ever had a better legacy of characters to call upon? I don't think so. Either way, the Marvel Universe could also do with more supernatural heroes. Ghost Rider and Blade are two of their most famous characters, and yet they've scarcely been given their own series in recent years. Here's hoping their time with the Avengers can finally change that for good. And that was our list. Know of any other Avengers that caught you off guard? As always, post your thoughts down in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe, and head back on over to whatculture.com forward slash comics for more lists and articles like this every day. I'm Ewan, you can follow me on Twitter at EwanRuinsThings, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!